Hello and welcome back to the Unbearable Reds. I'm your host Carl and today we're going to be talking about my favourite players for Liverpool to come from Scandinavia. Now, the connection between Liverpool and Scandinavia is a long-running one. It's arguably the region outside the UK with the highest percentage of Liverpool fans. There is a long-standing tradition of having Scandinavian players in the Liverpool team going back to the 1980s. Many of them have become legends, some have not. Christian Poulsen, I'm looking at you. So here's my favourite Liverpool players from Scandinavia. Number 5. Jan Molby. Molby is arguably the best Scandinavian player ability-wise to have ever pulled on a Liverpool shirt. Danish midfielder, joined Liverpool in 1984 from Ajax, signed by Joe Fagan and the rest when it comes to Jan Molby's history. He won three league titles, two FA Cups and he played 218 times for the club, scoring 44 goals. Molby was very much a player before my time as I have no personal memories of the player on the pitch. My opinion of Molby purely comes from his position in the pantheon of the greatest Liverpool player watching his highlight reels and the passion my dad shows when he tells me about the stories about Jan Molby. Another reason he makes this list is because I've actually met Jan Molby a couple of times when I was a kid. When I was growing up he lived relatively local to where I lived and a couple of occasions when I was out when my dad was taking us on days out here Jan Molby was there with his kids as well. Met him a couple of times at Thurston Beach and at Europa Pools and Birkenhead. My dad used to speak to him. He always seemed like a genuinely nice fella. Always having to speak to my dad even when my dad was fangirling over him whilst Jan was just trying to take his kids out, he's getting harassed by my dad. And I even remember one time, I think it was the second time we'd seen him at Europa Pools, and my dad said hello when he just responded and goes, You again. Not in a sarcastic tone, but no, having, having a laugh with him. And he, he was always grateful to speak to my dad and stuff. He always seemed like a nice fella, and he always had time for him. And I, I think that's quite important. It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. And Jan Mulby's quite a nice fella. Also, he had one of the best nicknames I've ever heard for a footballer. He was known as the blob being for a footballer on the heavier side. He lacked mobility as a player, but he more made up for it with his vision, his immense skill, his sublime passing and his shooting ability. Just watch his highlight reels. He's, he can take a ball past three players, barely move, but still go past them, and then rattle the ball into the top corner from 30 yards. Absolutely phenomenal. They don't make players like him anymore. Hello there, you made it this far into the video, so I assume you're liking what you're seeing. <laughs> Please drop us a like. Please subscribe, please share with your friends and leave any comments that you like and enjoy the rest of the video. Number four is Yari Lippmann. Probably a strange choice given that he only had one season at Liverpool and he had injury troubles during that time, but my god, what a player he was when he was firing. The Finn joined Liverpool in 2001. He was part of the, uh, the Gerard Houllier's treble winning team. Julier himself was thrilled when he signed him and described him as a world-class player and he genuinely was. You could see that from his time at Barcelona, who he signed him from, and from his time at Ajax, the guy was a baller. Now, in his time at Liverpool, he only went on to play 26 games for the club and he only scored five goals, which for a forward is not a great return. They were five very important goals, particularly the one against Roma in the Champions League, and I'm going to go into more detail on that later. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, Lippmann's time at Liverpool was dogged by injury first with a broken wrist, sustained an international duty, and then he had on ongoing ankle problems after that, and which limited his ability to play full 90-minute games for the club. But the reason he's on this list for me, I would say this is my personal list of five things favourite Scandinavian players to play for Liverpool is because of a memory I have of Lippmann when I was at the, the previously mentioned Roma game at Anfield. This was back in the days when the Champions League had a second group phase and it didn't just go straight to knockouts. It was the final game of the, the second group phase and uh, Liverpool struggled in the group and it it, uh, it was a hard group containing Barcelona, Galatasaray and Roma and we managed to fumble ourselves into a position where we could still qualify but a lot had to happen. We needed to beat Roma by two goals and Barcelona needed to beat Galatasaray by two goals as well just so we could get the goal difference swing and the points as well. So it wasn't impossible but it wasn't in our hands necessarily. And I was there that day in the stadium with my dad. We were in the corner of the stadium where the, the Anfield Road stand meets the, well at the time it was Centenary but now it's the Sergei and Degli stand. We were perfectly lined up with the goal line. The game kicks off and you know, you're singing, you're, you're, you're doing all the things that you do at the match and the game's going on. And then it was, my recollection of it is it was just before half time maybe about half an hour into the game. The people in the, the boxes behind us in the Centenary stand all start banging on the banging on the window and they're going 2-0, 2-0, because Barcelona were 2-0 up against Galatasaray and the stadium just erupted because at that point we knew all we had to do, we had to just keep our end of the bargain. Barcelona were doing their job, we now have to do ours. And it was like, if you're going to write a script for 
this, this is how you'd write it, because it was almost, to my recollection, instantaneous. We're on the attack, we're all, we've just got the news that Barcelona are 2-0 up, and then boom, penalty to Liverpool. Now, bear in mind, Roma came to the, into this game, all they, all they had to do was not lose. Now that Barcelona were 2 0 up, all they had to do was not lose and they were through. And then boom, penalty. And who's stepping up to take it? It's Yari Lipmanen. And it felt like forever. Waiting for the ball to get back to the, the centre circle. Him putting it down on the spot. Him walking back. Him turning. And it, 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 it felt like time was taken backwards until the ref blew, blew the whistle. And he blows the whistle. Yari runs up bang back of the net and that's it then from there Roma were deflated they'd gone in half time 1-0 down already they'd been under the cosh for the whole second for the whole first half and it wasn't going to get any better for them and then in the second half Heskey goes and scores a second goal Liverpool are through Everton's rosy we're on the march in Europe and then we get knocked out by by Leverkusen in the quarterfinals mm, yeah <laughs> but that moment Remember him being there at Anfield, him stepping up and taking that penalty. That's one of my favourite memories from what well, from going to Anfield. It's probably my favourite Anfield memory to be honest. And yeah, and for that reason, Yari Littman's four on my list. Number three is Daniel Agger. Another Dane makes the list and it's Mr. Tattoos himself, Daniel Agger. Rafael Benitez signed at the, the centre back from Bromby in 2006 when he was 21 as a backup for Hippia and Carragher. And he did go on to establish himself as a first team player in the coming seasons after that. Now, Agger was a phenomenal defender and he was consistently linked with Barcelona during his time at Liverpool and for good reason because the Dane was the complete package. In his younger days, he was a top defender and he was one of the, 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 the first proto ball playing defenders that are so popular now Daniel Agger was a ball playing defender before that was even a thing and he also had an absolute rocket of a shot on him and if you want to see exactly what he's capable of shooting wise just look up the goal I scored against West Ham in the league and the one against Chelsea in the Champions League semi-final absolute filth for a centre back or prior to Hippier leaving Agger had sort of taken his place in the team. Hippie was getting on a bit. He'd been at the club for 10 years. He was on the decline. Aga was on the up and he took his place in the team. Hippie leaves and then Aga is firmly established as the partner for Jamie Carragher. The partnership between Aga and Carragher is arguably one of the better partnerships that we've had in the Premier League era at the club. Arguably the best. Would you say it's as good as Virgil and Gomez? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. Jamie Carragher was a phenomenally underrated defender and Daniel Agger was uh, a complete package, much like Virgil. Not the quality of Virgil, but he got very much the same skill set, passing, scoring goals, leading the line, alongside Jamie Carragher, who was also leading the line. But unfortunately, as he got older, he did suffer from numerous injuries, and he was dogged by these injuries quite a bit. And it quickly became apparent that his, um, his body could no longer keep up with the physicality of the Premier League. And in 2014, he did return to Bromby after losing his first team berth, to, mostly to Martin Skell. Now, the reason he makes this list is because of the loyalty that he showed to us during our, our recent bad years. And at that point, while his players were jumping ship you know you'd had Mascarano, Alonso, you'd had Torres all gone all left the club and Daniel Lager he could have left Barcelona or Arsenal or Munich or Milan or any of the teams that at the time were top European teams but he didn't he stayed at the club and he stayed because he genuinely loved the club and he stayed because he genuinely loved the club he loved the fans he loved the culture and he understood he was like an honorary an honorary scouser basically and uh, this is a man that's got you'll never walk alone tattooed on his knuckles and that rocket that he scored against Chelsea was unreal I'd even go so far as to say that uh, a peak Danny Agger would be playing alongside Virgil van Dijk right now for Liverpool if such a thing was possible and number two my second favorite Scandinavian Liverpool player of all time is Sammy Hippier. Oh, Sammy, Sammy. He was club captain. He stood down to give the armband to Steven Gerrard and he did not grumble. He was a loyal servant to the club for many years and he's my pick for my he's my pick for the best defender we've had since the turn of the millennium. I'd even put him ahead of Virgil van Dijk. It's a hot take. Probably not one that many will agree with, but it's my video. Hippier joined the club in 1999, signed by Gerard Houllier, and he was the linchpin of that Liverpool defence from day one. We signed the film from Willem Tway in Holland, and he was an absolute mountain of a man, built like a Viking warrior, 
with like that white blonde hair absolutely iconic Hippier is one of the first players that actually should come to your mind when you think of the better players in Huglier's best teams and Benitez's best teams as well because he genuinely was he was genuinely a linchpin of two of Liverpool's best errors and he played 318 games for the club over 10 years scoring 22 goals in that time period that's a goal every 14 games which for a defender is a bad it's actually quite good and when he came alongside Stefan Ancho he made Liverpool one of the best defensive sides in the league under Julio and they then transitioned into an equally fruitful partnership with Jamie Carragher under Benitez and as I previously mentioned the, the, the three big events that have happened for Liverpool success wise since the turn of the millennium was the treble season 05 in Istanbul and in Madrid last year and Sami Hippier was a key player in two out of three of those teams and the only reason it's not three out of three is because unfortunately he's retired. The guy had longevity at the club and more importantly he knew when it was time for him to step aside and he didn't grumble and he did the right thing. He stepped aside for Steven Gerrard to take the armband and when it became apparent that he was no longer the player that he was and that Daniel Agger was more than capable of filling the hole. He was more than happy to step down and allow Agger to take his first team place. And he, he left the club in 2009. He went to, to Bayer Leverkusen and he left the club a hero and a legend. And my number one pick for my favourite Liverpool player from Scandinavia of all time is Vergard Hegem. No, it's not. It's John Arnorisa, the only Norwegian represented on this list. But they scoop up the number one spot with the legend, the Kraken himself, John Arnorisa. Risa joined Liverpool for Monaco in 2001 after we'd won the treble, signed by Julier and made an instant impact, scoring a goal on his debut in the Super Cup final against Bayer Munich. The guy was a left back. So for me, I was still 10 at the time, seeing this young lad sign for the club. Then score on his debut in the cup final. I was in love right away and that stayed with me throughout his whole Liverpool career and after, which is why he's top of my list. Risa quickly established himself as our first choice left back and never looked back. When you think of Risa, you think of goals, long range, powerful net buster goals. Andy Robertson could do with watching and learning from Risa because if he could add even a fraction of the goal scoring ability that John Arisa had to his game, there is no doubt that he would go on to be Liverpool's best left back ever. Back to Risa. Gerard gets all applauded for the long range goals and rightly so because he was fucking boss. But Risa was just as good, he just wasn't as prolific, which it wouldn't be if you're a left back competing against an attacking midfielder and the best player of the generation for Liverpool. Risa's shot was so powerful that he broke Alan Smith's leg in three places by kicking a ball at him. That's not hyperbole. That's not me exaggerating. That literally happened in an FA Cup game against Man United. Now I'm not lording this as like, oh, he injured a player. No, that, that that's you don't you don't wish that on anybody. But this actually happened. He actually kicked the ball at a player so hard it broke his leg in three places. Legend. In his time at the club, he won a Champions League, an FA Cup two League Cups and two Super Cups and um, I would recommend anybody who wasn't around for the Risa days to look up his highlight reel, look up his goal highlights and oh my god just sit back and enjoy it because it's something to behold. So that's my five favourite Liverpool players to come from Scandinavia. Drop a comment and let me know yours below and as always up the Reds.